You're right there, KJ. You just look very intense. You know, I am intense. Hello and welcome to episode 14 of Number One Crude Mistakes with myself, Glenn, who got a video out this week, and Havard, who got a video out this week, and KJ. How you doing, guys? <laughs> fine, fine. Really? Even though I didn't get a video out this week. <laughs> did, yeah. did you not get the memo? No, no. I, I guess our, in, our internal mail service <laughs> is not functioning. I think we should cancel it. Yeah. <laughs> Revenge is sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well deserved. Well deserved. <laughs> so what have you been up to, KJ? No videos? We don't hear about DIY projects from you? No, I, What's been uh, going on? Yeah, it's been a, a, a full-on uh, cleaning the house before Christmas and finishing the, the project that I'm, I'm working on. So, uh, so last weekend I finished all the welding and uh, this... Uh, last couple of days, I've done all the painting of it, so it's actually finished. Uh, so now it's just waiting for uh, for the tree, so I can take the the final beauty shots. Because I feel you can't really make a Christmas tree stand and make a video with it without having a tree in it. So... A little bit like fixing a cheese slicer and not slicing cheese or something. Yeah, like exactly, that. exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> But that being said, I was I was really impressed by you saying that you st- already started cleaning the house. But then I didn't feel that bad when you said you haven't got a, a tree up yet because we already fixed that. So uh, I guess it's just priorities. Yeah. yeah, that looked amazing, your tree thing. But we'll come back to that in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are KJ's. <laughs> Yours. <laughs> so when do you get your tree, KJ? Have you got uh, to wait for it to grow or anything first? Uh, no, no, no. My my father has been keeping track on that for the last uh, twenty, thirty years or something like that. Uh, so we're, get, we're picking <laughs> it up on um, on Saturday. Uh, yeah, just have to drive an hour and actually go out in the woods and, and select it, and then oh, take it nice. home. Get well. a bit of time to spend with the parents as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's always uh, he always likes to show off with the chainsaw in front of the grandchildren. <laughs> who wouldn't but does he juggle it or <laughs> no yes cu- cutting down a tree is fine enough for a five and eight year old you don't have to be any more fa- fancy than that but let's get back so... to 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 your uh to to you who actually publish videos oh yes yeah, it felt good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, getting back in the saddle there, Glenn. Eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, definitely not my finest work, but I really, really enjoyed editing and putting a video out. I I published the video and it was like a weight being lifted off my shoulders. I just went in the living room afterwards and just relaxed and melted into the settee for a bit. It was lovely. Yeah, because you had a bit of a I mean, you had a deadline to work towards and and up up to this project you were doing house renovation so you didn't really have have the time to yes to dig into <laughs> it so the days were counting down and you yeah that's right yeah definitely well it was a it was a really nice experience doing the video as i said i enjoyed the editing i enjoyed the filming and it was a good um a good learning experience on the new camera as well mm, so it's yeah. highlighted a few um problems that i needed to fix so lighting's a bigger issue with this camera than it definitely is filming off the phone so you know two new lights ordered and in (laughs) for the next time but how Um, how did it feel working with the camera did it feel nice when you used it um it was yeah it was okay it was um i really like the remote control function of it but it's just it's just different it's just um you know every time you every time you do something it's like getting new software or Anything like that, or a new piece of equipment, you just you just have to go through a little bit of a learning curve, don't you? Well, I do. So yeah. Nothing seems natural, especially when it comes to technology <laughs> with me. <laughs> yeah. And I really liked uh, all the, the the I mean the gimmicky parts where the <clears throat> project was actually helping building itself. <laughs> that was weird, wasn't it? Yeah, but but it, weird in my kind of way. Way my kind of yeah. way. 
Yeah, I was. Uh, I, I decided to do that obviously after I'd finished the project and uh, went back in the workshop and got the camera set up in front of me. So I was kind of straddling it, but it was just up in between my legs. <laughs> and then I've got the big hand in, <laughs> in one of my hands and the ruler in the other, and I'm reaching around, just pissing my pants. <laughs> this is just stupid. <laughs> yeah, but stupid is fun. Absolutely. <laughs> no, it was good. So I, I got my um, entry in on time as well, so that was good. Yeah. Yeah, so I might be expecting my prize you know, next Sunday when they announce the results. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got that in the bag. No, no worries. <laughs> nah, there's so, some actually some really nice builds in that competition. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a couple of favourites myself. Yeah, I think um, Marco's up there for me, and uh, all the makes that uh, the the sewing version of it, the, the the toolbox. I really like that one as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're quite a good bunch there, actually. Uh, yeah. Ole um, uh metal ruler pry, pry bar thing. That sound that looked good as well. So yeah, it's a, it's a lot of. I don't think I saw that one actually. I think yeah, that oh, might have c- come up uh, just uh, after the deadline, uh, but it, it still looked really cool. Ah, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, it, <laughs> I did a last minute. At- I did a last minute entry on it as well. <laughs> so I did all these acoustic panels in here and used up all the last sheet goods out of the workshop and I just entered that in as a last minute as well. <laughs> 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 well, so, while we're on the subject, I actually done some house renovation myself uh, when you're talking about acoustic panels. I actually got my panels up this week and felt like a proper woodworker because I used a Japanese pull saw in my living room <laughs> to cut the... I was thinking about getting out the track saw, but ooh, that makes a lot of mess. And it, I feel that I have better control with the pull saw and it, it came out uh, decent. So maybe we can uh, finish it off until Christmas, as was the goal. Nice, Except it's nice. the dreaded trim work left. So I have two doors and an opening. Oh, that's done. Minutes work, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's a doorstep, which is the worst. I mean, <laughs> the metaphorically uh, doorstep. <laughs> Just getting started. And I, I really, and maybe it's because my uh, crappy miter saw, I really don't m- like miters. So I've been Googling ways of putting door trim without using miters. You have several options. So I'm looking into <laughs> that. So procrastinating as far as I can. <laughs> I've not figured out a way to do door trim without miters, but I have figured out a way to do skirting board without miters, which works pretty well. But it doesn't work for external corners, just internal ones. Yeah, I have to think about that because I do want to do, of course, on the wall with the acoustic panels, I want to do oak, but then again, I have the old trim for the doors stored away, and those are white, but it really doesn't match. But, I mean, trim trimmings for doors and floors has become kind of pricey, so do I want to get new ones that match, or should I just put up the old ones that are white? Because I know I will change one of the doors maybe within a year. So then I'll have to do the trimmings there as well. So maybe I should just postpone that, but it would be nice to have well, at think... least the visible trims done before Christmas as we are having guests over. Well, it sounds like you uh, you want you want to sort of some sort of um, okay from us. So it makes it okay with your wife. So I say go with yeah. the old trim. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's what a, I would do. Let's just edit this, uh, <laughs> this set up out then. <laughs> Or put up some kind of a curtain or something like that just to, to frame the door. It's a festive, it's a Christmas decoration around the door. You don't see the. Yeah, I'm waiting for those to come back, the ones that we had in the 80s, like the curtains with the wooden beads and everything that was ah, yeah, uh, instead yeah. of doors. <laughs> yeah, when that's, uh, when that's back in style, I'm uh, going all in. <laughs> yeah, the wooden beads. But every time you move from one room to another, there's a. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you can't have anyone sneaking around at night uh, 
trying to access the cookies and so on while, while, while we are asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think you'll get it done for Christmas? Do you have a choice? Uh, how uh, done? I have a be? choice, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, how done? <laughs> now I'm um, I'm planning on doing a stint this uh, weekend. Uh, so um, and I mean it's it's max two hours of work, including drinking coffee and uh, thinking and measuring once, cutting <laughs> twice, and then having to go to the store and get an extra set of trim. But yeah, <laughs> I will get there. <laughs> So how does the progress on the health quarter feel? Oh, that's uh, that's all good feelings. Um, I really got a lot done, uh, and then I got a video out of it, so it's now on track. Um, I also feel that I've done everything that's related to the wind chest, which has been dragging out. So now I'm looking forward to the next video. Um, which hopefully will have some testing uh, in it, but but we'll see. Um, but yeah. yeah, I also now have to make a separate video for the Patreons because I actually got two weirdos signing up for a Patreon <laughs> account. So now I have to make exclusive content as well. <laughs> Is that your mum and your wife? Well, my wife said, Damn, she wanted to be first, but she got beaten not by only one, but two. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> by weirdos, I mean that in the best possible way, of course. <laughs> yeah. Come next Saturday after this uh, podcast, out, we've got no, no patrons <laughs> anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just wanted to say a big congratulations on that video. That was one of the nicest videos I've seen in a long time. Yeah, and I've got some feedback on it, uh, basically also after the cheese slicer episode. The, the people want the longer videos where I actually sh- not necessarily step by step show what I'm doing, but uh, they want to see more of the process while I actually do the voiceover. So, Yeah, yeah I think it's mo- more of the thought process than the actual the, the thing you're doing. Is, yeah, is an, an and I think part. for for the Hellcorder, which is a fantastically dumb concept on its <laughs> own. Yes, the people who are interested in watching videos about that are just as much interested in what's going on in the top of the head of the guy who actually thought of this. So I think some of them are just in it to see what I'm actually rambling on about. <laughs> yeah, because it's it's born from some weird place so you want to explore that yeah from this but that also makes it easy because you just film what you're doing cutting it together and then doing the voiceover is a breeze because nothing is scripted or planned so i just press play and start recording (laughs) i don't every time i have to stop and re-record is because i mispronunciate something or (laughs) stop stop thinking for a word for five seconds (laughs) I um I don't understand how you can conceive that whole project from start to finish. The the wiring, I mean, I looked at it and thought, oh, that's some really pretty cable management. But that is all I understood when I looked at that wiring. I um <laughs> Yeah, that I being said, it's it's a mess. Um I mean the, the the cabling and everything looks nice but there is no grand thought process it's just where do i place the component so it's easiest for me to hook it up and then of course i have the parts and some of the circuits board from the previous build i want to reuse so how can i place those and of course i got some uh, small usb cables which are only 30 centimeters long so i have to make sure that those can reach so it's out of practicalities i haven't like made a proper layout plan and then started from there (laughs) you're just showing off your skills and angling for a pcb way uh, sponsorship yeah (laughs) exactly and what is really fun which i didn't show in the video um 
of course, I, I drew out all the parts by hand. I, I also like doing that. And then I did everything in CAD before putting them to the CNC. And I had made all the files for the CNC ready. And then I, was, I thought that, all right, I get up in the morning and make myself a copy. And then I go down and press play on the CNC. And I had a thought, maybe you should double check all your measurements. And I thought, well, I did actually kind of do my due diligence while I went from the manual drawings to the CAD. So, well, I, I think it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and then I put it together. Uh, I filmed uh, the video. And as I was watching the video, I was like, this looks weird. Is that perspective? Or... And then I had to go into the workshop and actually measure and know there is a five millimeter height difference from left to right uh, on the side <laughs> panels. So, so one of the dado slots are five millimeters off. And of course, I have one spare plate in that thickness and quality. And of course, I want to also redo one of the middle plates, but I don't have enough materials to do both. So I actually thinking of, all right, I'll make a bigger dado on the one side so that the top plate will drop down five millimeters. And then I have to trim off the axis that is sticking up uh, like a, a flush trimming everything. So I, I think that's a quick and dirty solution that will work. Yeah, that should be doable. <laughs> yeah. Is it a, a dado or a rebate? I don't know the difference of those. I think they're, ba- <laughs> I think they're both the same. I think dado is just the American one. That's all. Yeah. Oh. Just thought I'd I just test call you them there. slots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that works. <laughs> Definitely works. <laughs> but it's and it's kind of weird because when I got to this point that I got the box together and I start to see the contours, it it does very much look like the original one, which was the plan because I want to keep the aesthetics, and of course there's there's been done changes all the way but they're not that obvious so at some point i just realized i looked at it and thought this doesn't look that different and god damn you spent so many hours working up to this and it's basically not changed at all and then it, i got that realization i'm like what the hell are you doing <laughs> <laughs> and then of course by dumb luck, I watched uh, the latest uh, Marble Machine video uh, where Martin from Wintergatan also at the end of the video just leant back in his chair and like, God damn, what are you doing? It's not even about music anymore. I don't know what it is. And I was like, <laughs> I feel you so hard right now. So I just had to send him an email and ask, can I use that clip in the next video where I could just... I know, brother, I know. <laughs> but I haven't gotten a reply from him yet. So. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it, it, it should look, it should look uh, kind of the same, but but a little bit new. It's like the, the Iron Man suits, uh, the Mark I, I I like the Mark II, the Mark III. I like the comparison yeah, there. Yeah, because, because I mean, to, the, to the common eye, there's no difference. This is Iron Man. But for, I mean, the people who are printing the costumes and are really into the comic books, they're, no, no, this is the, the Mark 3.5, and this is the B75, the special one, the special this, the special that, uh, that yeah. no one else can know. But So it should look roughly the same, but a little bit tweaked. So I think you're on the right track. Yeah, and I just realized I had not a goal, but it would have been fun to to have it at that level where you could test it, and then I could just uh, like uh, plug in a Christmas tune or something, and that could be like a teaser for Christmas. But that will never happen. But then I realized I posted the original video in March, I think, or was it February? I don't really remember. But is I've gone from the old one and now getting to completing a new one under a year and given i spent 10 plus years on the previous version it's a bit of a upscale time wise <laughs> i did uh, something that made me feel a little bit dirty on this video so when i first published it the um the title was helping hand and it did 40 views and it didn't seem to be climbing 
So with the help of AI, I, AI, I came up with something a little bit more clickbaity, which was the uh, the tool you never need you you didn't even know you needed or something like that. And it's now done over 500 views and still climbing. <laughs> <laughs> I expected to get a little bit more hate, but all I've got is two dislikes up to the ears. <laughs> yeah, well, it's... Oh, I, I, I'm following this game developer. Uh, and he said, of course, negative comments is the same as positive comments. It, it generates uh, traffic to your video. So that's positive for the algorithm. And... What he does, of course, you can then fire them up by following up on their comments, but he deletes them because then they get angry. Oh, no, it deleted my comment. And then they come back again and they write a new one. And then the algorithm adds that on top of the one that's already deleted. So it's like he's getting more traffic to his videos. That's a good (laughs) good tip. Yeah. So um, I haven't had much negativity and there are someone who is of course, pu- pushing dislike, but that might not be someone disliking the video, but it's like, I'm not into woodworking videos. And then if you press dislike, that's uh, to tell the algorithm that I'm not interested in these. And then they just hmm. start sorting it out. So it it might not be that they're actively disliking your video. It's just like not their cup of tea. And that's the way you can actually sort that out. It could be something quite as simple as they wear reading glasses as well and haven't got them in while they're tapping the phone because I've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah I'm the linking thing. it to that. Yeah. yeah. Or they might just not like you, which seems, you know, but it's fine as of well. Of course, isn't I it? Are... <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah. <laughs> but of course, yeah, it's, it's fun using AI to generate. Um, like headings and see how that actually helps. But I noticed you you didn't put, pick up on any of mine or KJ's very good suggestions for titles for that video. <laughs> I can't remember them now. What were they? Do you remember? Well, they were all innuendos, of course, like uh, the <laughs> helping hand or uh, hand job. <laughs> it's, uh, so, some more direct than others, but yeah, I think some of them would generate some traffic. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what: when it when it's when it stops getting views, when it gets when it hits that point, I'll try a different title, see if it makes any difference. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, th- I was thinking of like if I'm going to test that on some old videos, because there are some videos there that I feel is good uh, that I but I don't want to po- repost them, but of course. People are like me. I can stumble over some some new YouTubers that I follow, but it's not all of them where I just go back and rewatch their entire catalog. And of course, if they've been doing it for some years, that's quite a task. So, yeah. <laughs> given my watch later list is already <laughs> piling on, so I don't want to think too much about my old old videos. And yeah, I mean, I. I felt early on that I was so bad at thumbnails and so bad at titles that I dug myself a hole with a format and just <laughs> keep doing it like this and at least it would look similar. And I mean, one uh, one reason why I have that uh, the pink byline thing in my uh, in my thumbnails is so I can see them myself. So I actually. I actually notice when people are commenting and so I don't miss anything. <laughs> so it's more or less for me. But, but I know it's it's probably not the best way to do it. But I just know that I can't come up with anything better myself, better than, than that. So I just stick with the format instead. Yeah, I'm... I'm transitioning, I think, with the last couple of thumbnails because I did do a lot of modifications and then of course I spend a lot of time thinking about the thumbnails and then I'm thinking that all right what I'm doing now I've seen others do and it doesn't really feel like it comes natural to me so on the last one I just I just used the picture and then I uh, added a title and uploaded it and I think at some point that is more than enough of course, I could spend a day or two just tweaking on a thumbnail, but I don't think that will 
blow anyone's mind. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it has to fit. And if it does, they're going to go to the video and, what the fuck is this false <laughs> advertisement? <laughs> it has to feel natural. Like, because if, if it's one thing I hate with build videos is when you have a forced narrative and forced... Uh, forced problems oh no i only have two days to finish this project <laughs> god's sake this it's not like the time slot on the internet is just w- wait a bit plan better don't be a boss and uh and trying to maybe you should some story maybe you should do a little stop like that on your video kj i've only got two days to get the christmas tree <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. What sort of uh, what sort of click rate are you getting through on your videos then, Havard? Um, what is click rate? <laughs> <laughs> we are such professional. I mean, I, I've, I've, <laughs> I've seen the statistic that it says uh, click rate and uh, placement and something, but I've never actually well, <laughs> clicked and read up and. Well, I believe taken in. Is. I, I believe it is um, when the video comes up on your feed and you either click or swipe it away. So the, the higher the click rate, the oh, better. Yeah. yeah. So it is. I, th- I think that's if, what it is. If someone has been presented the thumbnails and how many have then chose to press on it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have. Okay. Now, now I learned <laughs> something new. That's good. Uh, but yeah, I haven't paid much attention to that i just no, me neither see the the views and of course I, I go in and see the graphs i mean how many seconds do they watch before they jump off and <laughs> of course a lot of the build videos you have that a lot of people click or and using a lot here is very relative so <laughs> just so you know um and then, of course, it drops off very early because of all those people at all oh, this was not interesting and then of course you have the ones that keep watching and then you have a spike at the end where it's completed. Yeah. So at some point, a lot of people like, fuck this. And then they just jump to the end to see it finished. <laughs> I think you get a lot of the autoplays there as well. When you when you scroll a little slowly and the video starts playing, it, that actually, actually counts as a view. If you, yeah, because you, you, hmm. you get those on your things you watch, but no, I didn't watch this. I just, I just po- post when scrolling because my kids said something. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that might be it. So I guess I, um... those, thir- 30, those, those views under 30 seconds, I don't really count them as views because most of them are not people clicking through and actually want to watch your video. Because, but, yeah. And I've taken that into account, uh, and I also actually mentioned it in the voiceover for a couple of videos that, all right, if you're not interested in this part, you can jump to. And that became easier after I started using timestamps. So you can just tell people where to jump to if they would just want to see the completed build. Because I have two very polarized type of comments. It's the people who want the longest format as possible. They want uh, a three-hour video of, of me just commenting on everything. <laughs> and then there's the people who are like, do a 10-second build montage and get it over with. And like, okay. <laughs> you can jump to the end. <laughs> so it's like, there's no in-between. <laughs> my um, my best click r- click-through rates have come off thumbnails I've paid the least attention to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that just figures. that's often the case, yeah. but it's also hard to see. Uh, if you take the three videos that did the best and you try to compare the thumbnails, you can't often really. Well, what's the common <laughs> no <laughs> common lower denominator here? I don't yeah. see it. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right there, KJ. You just look very intense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you like you were staring into intense. my soul. <laughs> <laughs> so uh what what do you think to the office it looks really you look like a professional recorder with those sound panels and <laughs> but, but i mean you have you have some decorating to do behind you like uh no, that's, like that's... a like a pasty sign oh yeah i might get a past, <laughs> i might get a pasty sign <laughs> 
Oh, God damn. I should have made you one for Christmas. <laughs> well, it's too late now. I sent... Uh, I sent out some stickers, actually, and some Christmas gifts. And actually, sending packages has become crazy expensive, even yeah. within Europe. So I just marked it as a regular letter. And then, of course, because it fits <laughs> size-wise. And then when I went to the post office to send it, it's like, so these are regular uh, envelopes, like letters? Yeah. So it's only paper? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing of value? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I noticed that so, that they, 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 <clears throat> they, you, you, it's either documents or other things. So it's going to be a flat yeah. packing. Do we have to and start always... hiding stuff in books or something like that? You used to have a stack of papers and a cut out with something laying in it, but no, no, it's just papers, just paper. But that also is me in a nutshell, I guess, because when they ask a question, is there anything of value? Yeah. What's the threshold there? It's a stamp. I would say there is no value there, but of course, it um, actually is something valuable. Yeah, it's it's like probably yeah. ten cents or something there in paper and ink if you start to calculate it. But then you have the envelope itself that has a cost because it's made out <laughs> of paper, and then it's the ink I used from the pen when I wrote the address. Should I count that in as well? Because then everything has a value yeah. and could not be sent as a regular postcard or anything. And are you telling me a postcard <laughs> don't have value? Have you never been at a shop buying postcards? Those are expensive. So those have value. And my feelings and on course, the cards, those are valuable. Now those are priceless. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, if I'm going to note that down, nobody would afford receiving it. So. <laughs> Actually, KJ, I think your postcards do have some value, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, you you send out very pretty cards. Yeah, it's, I try my <laughs> best to actually. I mean, I I I really feel that, that I mean stamps are so expensive now, nowadays. So if I post something and I I can send fifty grams, by God, I'm sending at least forty five of those. Just to st- <laughs> I'm stuffing in some some sweets, a nice card, and I'm not just putting like a five gram sticker in an envelope and sending it off. I'm getting my money's worth. <laughs> by putting more value in it that costs you more I, it's at least it's <laughs> bear, I say <laughs> <laughs> so where do you get the postcards from now that's my uh, friend from way back from school Lisa Lott who is an artist and she does really really great paintings a uh, lot of fairy tale things and uh, and cats and um, yeah, lot of lot of really nice stuff. Yeah, they are good. So I, I, I tend to uh, I tend to get postcards from her to to send out because I want to spread her art through the world. I think she's yeah she's the the artist that we have most paintings of on the walls at home as well. So yeah, nice, really nice. <laughs> See, as though you've not got a video out or done any DIY or anything this week. One of your other achievements was the uh, works Christmas party. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> and that was very much uh, my uh, sense. I was. We have every year we have a, a little competition uh, uh, for some fun and games, and uh, and the one uh, one te- the the team who wins gets to organize it the next year. Uh, so I more or less. Uh, got started uh, in the summer vacation. And this really shows that I'm not really that good at communicating or to- or, or working with other people because I more or less <laughs> organized everything myself and didn't really tell anyone other than, okay, you have this station, you have do this, you have this station, you do this. <laughs> and I just, <laughs> I took full control of it. You uh, ran it like a dictator, did you? Yes, very much so. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not really a, a team person, I think. <laughs> Tell us about the venue. That looked really interesting. Yeah, that was the the old torpedo factory uh, in the Stockholm Harbor uh, Harbor Center. Uh, so, well, they were. It was the part where they've been building ships like for lots lots of hundreds of years. 
But the last last thing they did there was they built torpedoes. I think it closed down in like the 60s or something like that. It feels like it from the machinery as, at least. So it was really nice. Uh, they have had some of the old machinery when you stood in line to go to the bathroom, which meant that there was no, no <laughs> problem with this long queue because you could stand and look at the old, <laughs> uh, really old uh, machinery. And that's always oh. fun for engineers. Yeah, no, yeah that looked really cool. interesting. But, I mean, the concept sounded more like a punishment to me. I mean, if you do it well, then you get to arrange it next year. A lot um, of people see it like that. So they, they all <laughs> they all play along and get caught up in the game. And then they realize, ooh, we're about to win this. Let's, let's punch the numbers. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm the well, one of the few who actually likes to win because I, I really like organizing parties. I'm much better at organizing them than going to them. Well, me and a, a friend... Um, which is also, uh, I say also, as I am one, but no. Uh, she is an artist, and we met each other at work for the first time, and then we just realized we are like-minded, and then we started talking about the things we could do and do together, and then, of course, the Christmas party came up, and then someone asked if someone wanted to do anything, and yeah, we ended up uh, making like a silent movie, <laughs> there we got a lot of people involved, but everyone just got a broken down piece of the plot. So nobody knew the entire <laughs> plot of the movie. And then we used an entire evening uh, just having people running around while we were filming them, making them do stuff. And that was the amazing part that we actually got so many people involved without knowing what the end result was going to be. And it turned out great. So we ended up doing another thing the next year, since we are both uh, like to draw. Uh, we actually copied a Norwegian like Christmas story and we made it into a cartoon. Of course, not with moving anim animations, but we spent hundreds of hours making this. And then we realized that now people started expecting it. So for the next <laughs> Christmas party, so what are you coming up with now? And people almost took it for granted and they did not know how many hundreds of hours that we put into like drawing and video editing and audio layover and everything. So, uh, yeah. So we thought, should we start charging for this? I mean, should we start a separate company that just moves in at the end of the year and make awesome, uh, like a uh, Christmas dinner presentation. <laughs> but of course, so uh, much fun. <laughs> yeah, but if you're going to do it, the hours you use for it, you could do one company a year. So you need to sp <laughs> specific target companies that are willing to pay enough for that one thing that it will cover you for the <laughs> rest of the year. <laughs> I'm sure there are other events you could do it for for the company. I'm sure that'd be absolutely fine. You wouldn't have to yeah. just film. You wouldn't have to just film it at Christmas time either, would you? You could film throughout the year and no. edit it, and then just release it at Christmas. But that's the thing. It's it's like when I was doing the local theater. It's when you're writing like skits and so on. It's it's much easier when you know uh, the people you're writing about. So when we made the movies and everything for the company, it was all of course always referencing people and what they do and how their offices looks like. So it's it's really fun internally. If I showed them to you guys, you would probably think oh, this was boring because you didn't know the persons and how they are in real life. And that I think would have been hard doing this for a company that you know nothing about just coming in for a couple of days, taking some notes, talking to people to try to get a feel of how the office environment is, and then try to make something that portrays that in a funny way. I think that is <laughs> tremendously difficult. Yeah. Then you have to talk yeah. to people as well. <laughs> yeah. That's uh <laughs> I wasn't going to go there, but yeah, that's the that's the that's the baseline there. <laughs> but considering how how, I mean, being an event organizer, considering how crappy some of the events that that companies pay good money for actually are, being in organizing some, I mean, games and events and team building exercises that that's doesn't look that hard actually. 
No. And that is... We also figured out for the the third year in the row, but of course I quit. Uh, we both quit, so it never happened. But what the plan for the third event was, we would like to try and make a board game. And then should we make a board game uh, with stupid complicated rules and everything is of course <laughs> tied together with that company so everything the the rules and the prices and everything are something that you work in uh, from day to day and then we should at the evening we should just divide the room into four tables and everyone get one print out of the game and then we would just like be like game masters just walking around setting the premise reading the rules and helping the game along and I really love that idea, and I want to do that sometime when we realized we just had one night where we just was riffing ideas and all right, there's a reason why people use years of making proper board games that are engaging and where the rules are actually coherent and so on and we are trying to do this for a very narrow niche within a few weeks, and then so yeah, we realized that that's not gonna happen within the time frame, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, what was the, your title going to be? Oh, that we never got that far. <laughs> uh, we just jumped right into the rules, and uh, I just thought it'd be really make it this really good if you were going to do this game at a party and uh, call the game "Who Should Be the Boss" or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> oh, I, I played a lot of board games. Um, yeah, be both me and my wife uh, before we had the kids, when we actually had evenings to ourselves. Uh, when we wasn't totally knackered, so I uh, I have a couple of sketches for board games that I thought about. But but going from the oh this is a neat idea to actually have something that you just can can try and play to 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 test it out. That's really hard. And then to go from that prototyping stage to something that's actually a finished product. That's a hu- yeah. huge, huge step. And then thinking about, do you actually want to make this into an actual board game to actually sell it and make it? And that's a huge leap as well. Yeah, because that was the thing that we thought the facade of the building is really iconic. So we thought if we take, if you use that as a base reference, we can then rip everything off the board game like snakes and ladders because we could just use the facade and have some ladders between the windows and so on and then we could basically just modify the rules and make it easy for ourselves but then we also thought that if we did this properly like a new board game there is a kind of of course i was working it's a a directorate within the government so it's it's very much bureaucracy so and that's a quite big niche because you have all the municipalities and uh, the counties and everything, and they're kind of built up in the same way, and you have thousands of thousands of people working there. So if you made that game, we thought that would strike a chord with every bureaucrat in the country. So if we make it a bit more like not as specific to our branch of the entire governmental tree, but make it more like a bureaucracy uh, generic, then we thought we could actually sell this because that would be a brilliant Christmas gift for the various branches to give to their employees and so on. And then we started calculating, all right, if you take 20 pounds per game, which is a fair price, and then how many employees in Norway are working within the government sector and then, all right and then of course let's and then we started calculating and then of course it started to get serious and then it's just washed out in the sand <laughs> but I, I think I have some rough sketches laying around still so I just need to find the settings for my heated blanket it's just gone off I'll be back <laughs> oh I forgot my I actually thought, thought about it uh many hours ago i should go down and put on the heater and i never got around to it so now i have it on (laughs) under the table i'm sitting on my heated blanket nice and comfortable i'm back (laughs) here is one you need to edit out i guess (laughs) thanks for that (laughs) cheerio
Oh dear, another kind of stellar artois for Havard. <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> is, uh... no, Glenn wishes. <laughs> That's Alcott, yeah, Glenn wishes. What is it? Is, uh, so... Granat, granat apple. Yeah. Grapefruit. It's a gre- grenade apple. Is yeah. it pomegranate? Yeah, pomegranate. Yeah, it's pomegranate. Yeah. yeah. I got that from the picture, not the translation. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I figured. I figured. <laughs> yeah. Directly imported from Sweden, or should I say smuggled? I think we brought more than we were allowed to. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is there a limit on water? <laughs> 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 oh, maybe it's yeah. Oh, no, there is probably just a a limit of price before you have to pay uh, yeah. <laughs> taxes on it. Probably. I'll tell you something. I'll take a an opening can on the podcast over any of the any of the other tech problems we've had recently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Knock on wood. It's been going great so far. Yeah. This feels <laughs> all too smooth. Last yeah. last week was a flipping nightmare for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you didn't even have to do the edit. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah, but I did feel guilty. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't all your fault. I think it was the I started the recording wrong did not help in the early early stages. I was just trying to push too much data through a network that didn't uh, okay. that wasn't that healthy to begin with. So yeah. To be yeah, fair, none of the yeah, none of the problems were my fault. It was uh, good old Wi-Fi was laying me down and my location in the house. <laughs> <laughs> was that Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi? <laughs> Did you blame uh, your would, wife? <laughs> I would never blame my wife on this. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. Thought I so. actually realized I I've said Wi-Fi many a time while uh, meaning Wi-Fi. <laughs> well, it's like in Norwegian it's Wi-Fi, so it's uh, uh, okay. It's I the actually, odd slip. I have actually picked up on that, but uh, I don't like to correct you, especially when it sounds <laughs> funny. <laughs> have your wife? No. Has your wife picked up picked up on it? No, not yet. So. Because I, I, I got a couple of cold shoulders, but no, <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> I got some feedback uh, today from my wife because I, I I I think I said on the last episode, or if it was the half pint that. I claim that uh, Sweden ha- hasn't oppressed anyone in the last couple of thousand years. She said, yes, we have. <laughs> <laughs> compared, Do you know what? I feel, I feel like your wife's on my side sometimes. Yeah, I think so too. A little bit too much, perhaps. <laughs> so, so no more Latin names from now on. <laughs> I've, actually, uh, I've actually messaged her a couple of times today. <laughs> And I've, in, we should... and I've interacted with uh, Havard's wife as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think it's a it's a common theme. <laughs> I think it goes both ways. Let's never meet as families. It, things are just going to get weird. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> most likely. Uh, but we should probably at some point have put in a disclaimer because we have been talking a lot about history and I'm no history major no, uh, no, not even either. a minor but I'm um, listening back on some of the episodes I come off kind of <laughs> strong that yeah well he probably knows what he's talking about but I, <laughs> no not at all <laughs> just piecing together information from here and there and haven't done any quality check or <laughs> right. As long as you go in and you're you're really confident, that's all that really matters. That carries you a long way, doesn't it? Sadly, yes. Yeah. And this, <laughs> and this is and this is not the history podcast. So I mean, if uh, read yeah. the name and if you expect anything uh, historically accurate, <laughs> then you are in the wrong place. <laughs> I mean, we could brand it as a historical if you wanted to. Yeah. Maybe we history could get a different. Channel. Maybe we could get a different ranking. I don't know whether. The CMOs are familiar. I don't know whether we have mentioned it, but we are ranked 121 in the Norway comedy <laughs> podcast. Uh, maybe we could do a history comedy Norway <laughs> sort of <laughs> weird mix-up. But that being said, it's worldwide it sounds high, but in Norway we don't have so many comedians. So, I mean, there's... 
if you are guessing that there are comedians on top and then there's a gap there before 121st place or something. <laughs> so there are something in between there who actually beats us without being in the comedy uh, segment at all. <laughs> I mean, we have, uh, I think it's the show, Have I Got News For You? Uh, the Norway has a Norwegian adaptation of that. It's one of the most popular shows on Norwegian television. And of course, for the first couple of years, they had guests on, which were comedians, which were funny to watch because they could actually play off a topic. But now they are scraping the bottle, so they are getting politicians in and... uh, God knows oh, God. who else. And you can actually see that when uh, the one who is leading the the program, he actually set up a joke. And then you can actually see that they're looking down and reading the notes oh, that, of course, the writers have written for them <laughs> because they, they haven't <laughs> gotten them enough in advance that they have read up and memorized some of them. And it's... I've just stopped watching that show several years ago because this is so crappy. I mean, there is nothing left there. (laughs) Well, maybe maybe when they get completely to the bottom of the barrel, they'll invite us three on. (laughs) Yeah, that would be nice. Being being ranked 121. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe we should sell us into that. Maybe we should send them an email like, uh, ooh. Have you heard about these guys? They're number 121 on the (laughs) podcast comedy billboard Norway. (laughs) I'm sure I'd do great on a Norwegian television program. (laughs) Yeah, given it's all in Norwegian. Yeah. yeah, uh... But I've seen some of the other performances and I think having someone on that really don't talk the language and don't get uh, references from the Norwegian news would actually be a step up from some of the (laughs) performances we have seen in the last couple of years. I just sit there and listen really, really carefully for when they say gung or gang or whatever it is you call your whole way. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I heard that word. (laughs) Oh, let's go catch the (laughs) hurdy-gurdy. Oh, I can never see that now without thinking hurdy gurdy. <laughs> and I, I even know what the hurdy gurdy is, but still now I envision that big ship. <laughs> Earlier on, when you mentioned the uh, pulsar, for some uh, using the pulsar in the living room, it got me thinking. I wonder if you could hook up some sort of dust extraction for your hand tools, some sort of pipe that slipped underneath. I don't know. I don't know how you do it, but it'd be really cool, wouldn't it? Other than just holding the pipe on and the, and the handle of the pulsar in the same hand, I've seen some attachment that you use when you're drilling holes in the wall. Yeah. Power tool, like you you drill through it and it actually forms a seal around your drill, so it takes up all the debris. Yeah. But for a Japanese pulsar, that would be interesting to pull off. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> the, it's less amount of dust, so you don't need like a full vacuum. You could do it with a much smaller tube. Just one, just thinking, where should you place it? Because you don't want, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't want a, a big vacuum hose attached to your saw. That would be just weird. Maybe if you just a, a long straw, but with a filtration thing on it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You don't want oh, a motor yeah, as well. So <laughs> for every. Yeah, but you could use the Venturi effect. So if you have one straw <laughs> coming into the second one, you could actually blow, but then you yeah. need a collector bag or something. But that being said, the biggest issue today was using the handsaw. All the dust and debris just fell straight down so I could just hoover them up afterwards. But of course, I was trying to follow the scribe line and that got covered with dust all the yeah. time. And I just how to... The first time I just tried to blow it away and oh fuck i just blew it all over the carpet so now i just yeah. uh <laughs> increased the vacuuming job <laughs> dust extraction for hand tools that's you should work on that glenn it could be a nice yeah, video I mean, the hand the hand plane makes a hell of a mess if you know some people use them don't they yeah, yeah. mine's just for show mainly 
But then again, could you? That would be kind of useful. But I was thinking, but could you get a dust extraction for a chainsaw? I mean, that's as pointless Ooh. as it come, but that would be a cool <laughs> mechanical contraption. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a, a, re, a reversed. Uh, oh, that's cool. I actually have a. I have a. I bought a leaf blower for the Gatling gun. So I could have, then that's a leaf blower as a backpack. So I can have that on and I can connect the hose somehow to a chainsaw. Then I can have two engines running at like 10,000 RPM while yeah. I'm cutting wood. I'm like, <laughs> really? Yeah, that's a... I was thinking... If you work on the handsaw one, I'll work on that one. <laughs> okay, deal. <laughs> while, you're, while you're at it, you should put a, put a hose to the, to the exhaust from the chainsaw as well. So you just have a lot of hoses and stuff going into it look really steampunky and you have some exhaust pipes going up from a backpack so you look like a truck or something with a so you don't get <laughs> yeah it's a, it's mythbuster 2000 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then you can use your chainsaw inside as well you just have a big, big long hose going out with all the fumes and uh, and everything yeah, because that's a pain in the ass when you have brought the firewood in and you realize, oh, it's just the big logs. And then you have to go back out again to uh, chop them into smaller pieces. If you could just use the chainsaw inside, you would save yourself a couple of extra trips out in the shed. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> totally worth it. <laughs> oh, yes. And that's just another reason to get a chainsaw. Um, I actually got a reason for I always wanted one. But this week I have decided that I'm getting one uh, because we I think it's the second or third year in a row where we went to a friend's uh, farm and uh, got ourselves a Christmas tree and he said they have a huge forest that they need to to bring down next year because they are extending the the paths and the play area for their horses and then they said, well, if you want some firewood, you could just uh, come and help us uh, remove all those uh, trees and then you could just take as much as you want. And then I started thinking, well, the last couple of years I've paid for firewood. And if I don't have to pay for firewood next year, I can use that money to justify buying myself a brand new chainsaw. <laughs> so that's what I've been doing this week. I've just been looking at various chainsaws. And then, of course, I'm getting the feature creep. And then, of course, ooh, you want that one inch extra length. And, oh, I want a bigger <laughs> engine. And then, so it's it's getting kind of expensive. So I need to stock up on wood for maybe 10, 15 years to pay off the <laughs> chainsaw. <laughs> the, most, the, best, the best chainsaws to use are the ones with the biggest engine and the smallest blade. They feel so much more balanced. <laughs> so who's who told you that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't want one with the smallest engine and the biggest blade, that's for sure. <laughs> no. This sounds and like an course... innuendo, but I can't really figure out what you mean. <laughs> yeah. And what I realized is that, okay, it might be that I haven't worked out very much the last couple of years, uh, but just after cutting down a few trees and then spending a day uh, pulling them out and hooking them to the tractor. And of course we used the tractor for most of the way. And I'm still a bit sore in the arm that was actually <laughs> holding the chainsaw. So I'm not going to be a professional woodworker. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, what's it Lumberjack. called? Lumberjack. Yeah. So, of course, I would like to get a big one because that is cool, but they're also much more heavy. And since this is not going to be my full-time <laughs> occupation, I'm going to be knackered for several days. So, yeah, maybe a smaller, cheaper one, but of course, with a decent motor-to-blade ratio and uh, would be the best option. What yeah. you need is the Festool exoskeleton as well. So you can oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> double your carrying capacity. If it would have been something... Other than Festool, of course. I'm sure there are other brands available. Have you have you seen one in yeah. real life yet? No. Nope. No, I just seen videos. Yeah. So there was a when I went to that woodworking show back in November, there was a, a guy walking around with one on, and you could just tell he was embarrassed to be walking around the show wearing <laughs> it. 
what? I, I would all, love he, he it. Walked, <laughs> he, he walked past me and I just sort of looked at him and rolled my eyes and thought, you look a dick. <laughs> <laughs> but then I started, okay, I get major Robocop vibes. But okay. then again, if you get two smaller I mean, if you get a smaller chainsaw, you can get two, so you can have one in each arm. <laughs> and then, of course, if you have the festival thing, then you can just go around cutting down trees willy-nilly, and then, yeah, that would be... That sounds safe. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be practical or safe, but it would look bloody awesome. <laughs> Think of the content. Uh, <laughs> I've had a really fun day today at work. On a, I've been on a chainsaw and bonfiring all day been fantastic oh that's nice yeah put a podcast in my ears get the chainsaw going get a big fire going and just keep just keep chopping and feeding it all day it's brilliant (laughs) that got me thinking because i actually stumbled over a wood-fired popcorn popper today which i really took a liking to and i want this one but of course i would use it once and then never again but it looked really cool and then of course I saw your bonfire and everything. That would be nice with a cup of tea and some uh, <laughs> wood-fired popcorn. <laughs> you wouldn't have been able to get the popcorn anywhere near that fire that I made. <laughs> I've got no hairs on one arm from just putting a piece of wood on it while it was blazing today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's what's happened to your eyebrows. I was afraid to ask. <laughs> I was hoping the lighting in here would hide that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's brilliant. We do um, in my hometown. There is a lake that usually freezes over in winter time, and at one end, there's a lot of methane gas in the bottom in the sediments, <laughs> and this, of course, yeah. causes uh, like a gas bubble pockets under the ice. And that was really fun when we were kids, just going out on the ice and taking a hammer and a nail and making a small hole in those pockets and just lighting them on fire. Fantastic. And of course, uh, Lake farts. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, I was thinking, well, if you make a small hole and we light it and then I come and make a bigger hole with an axe, that would be cool. So that's how I, at the age of 13, 14 or something, went to the school <laughs> next day without eyebrows and hair on one side of the head or anything. <laughs> <laughs> And smell burned hair for a week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's being said, I, I need to tell this story. A friend of mine, it was uh, at one period, he took lighter gas in his mouth. And then, of course, he lit the lighter and then he blew the gas out, like making like a burst of fire. And then, of course, someone challenged him, like, you should do it through your nose. <laughs> so he did. <laughs> So he sipped lighter gas and then he blew it out his nose and that instant regret. And he, sm- he said he smelled burned hair for a month because he, he torched all the hair in his nose. <laughs> it took weeks before he got the sense of smell back. <laughs> he just traveled up. There's no way you're going to get it out quick enough. Oh, my <laughs> so God. <bad. laughs> Anybody who's ever tried to uh, laser engrave leather it's that's the same smell you get from that. Oh crap! Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it is. It's horrible. <laughs> Stinks your workshop out. <laughs> is this guy still alive that did the uh, lighter fuel thing through his nose? Do you think? I haven't heard from him in years, but <laughs> <laughs> does he I have a so. sense of smell? <laughs> <laughs> He's not around anymore, but he went out with a bang. <laughs> yeah. Could be, could be. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it might be. Well, I see YouTube videos, so people are still doing dumb shit, but we, we did a few things that I wouldn't recommend anyone doing. And we got lucky a few times. And of course, some of us didn't go get so lucky. I had a school friend who played with uh, not dynamite, but uh, the. Um, the smaller ones that sets off dynamite. They had some lying around because that, yeah. And that was something that if you lived on a farm, you usually had dynamite because you used that for trenching work and so on. And he found one of those and hit it with a hammer. So he lost some fingers and he lost one eye. And of course we did me and basically all my friends, we did like, yeah, we were competing in, uh, 
rifle shooting and so on at a very early age. And of course, we had unlimited access to ammunition. So, of course, picking those apart to get the gunpowder out and making various mm-hmm. kinds of things saying boom. Yeah. So <laughs> I think we were more lucky than smart in some cases. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I think we'll wrap this episode up then. (laughs) (laughs) With a bang. (laughs) With a bang. (laughs) Thanks for listening, everybody. Join us Tuesday for a half pint. See you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.